Welcome to the CEN Show, a platform where we learn from the world community. I am your host, Rasuki Mascani, and on the panel this evening, we have Queen Shamala, we have Rocky Kaso, Cal Odom, Professor Amin Ra, Miss McIntosh Moore, we have Stephanie Montgomery, Brother Mashinda, and Stephanie Williams. Tonight we have a guest host. She's been on at least three times. It's Dr. Sherry Randolph, and she has a guest this evening, and she will take over from this point. Welcome back, Dr. Randolph. It's all yours. Thank you so much, Rasaki. I'm glad to be here again. I'm very excited about our guest and the topic. The guest that we have tonight, she has over uh, three decades in entertain the entertainment industry overall in film and television. Please welcome Miss Cleo King to the platform. Tonight we've selected to discuss Origin. Origin is a film written and directed by Ava DuVernay. Now, I may even be emotional just, to, just saying Origin and the thoughts that I've had, and I really want to hear from the panel tonight. The book was written by Isabel, I'm sorry, Wilkerson. Isabel Wilkerson, and the book is called Cast, and she's talking about the origin of discontent. Ava DuVernay and Paul Garns took the time to turn this into a film that we could see. And many of us did not purchase the book prior to the film. And now we've ordered the book and we're reading the book, Cast, The Origin of Our Discontent. And what the feeling that I have right now that rises up in me just thinking about the film is about Al Bright. Because for a long time, I would talk about racism. And we use the word racism a lot, which Isabel Wilkerson says we blanket things with the term racism, and it's not just that. And when, when I was a child, I had an experience with white adults, a white teacher, that I didn't go tell my parents about. I didn't tell anybody about. And I, when I saw the film and I looked at Al Bright and how they treated him at the swimming pool, the feeling that I felt in first grade is, is something that's very close to the edge of my skin right now because I had the opportunity to rewatch the film just a couple of nights ago. But I would like you to show the trailer for those who have not seen the film and um let's see what we see with the trailer mom made me promise i'd come by today it's my birthday wait today is your birthday yeah. <laughs> happy birthday uh, um it's, it's, it's brett <laughs> i'm isabel yeah i know Most relationships end. Friendships, romances, they break. You okay? If you look closely, you'll find something tragic was happening. Interested in writing something for us? I don't do assignments anymore. Yeah, well, you're a better writer than most people do anything. Have you heard the tapes? No. Uh, of what? Bedford Police Department, Bush Sean. Hey, we've had some break ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. It looks like he's up to no good or something. I want to be in the story really inside the story. And 
build a thesis that shows how all of this is linked. I gotta be honest with you, I don't understand. I don't see it. You go and write your stories. Folks need to know about this. You're trying to make sense of racism, but your thesis is flawed. It was all lies. They knew we weren't inferior. You don't escape trauma by ignoring it. You escape trauma by confronting it. I don't write questions. I write answers. And Rasaki, can you show the other video that's the short interview with Paul Garns and Ava DuVernay? We made it independently. Going back to our independent roots when no one cared what we were doing and no one was watching, uh, we somehow recaptured that vibe. just out there kind of winging it you know what I mean just saying what we felt expressing ourselves with through the images and so oddly enough although it's an ambitious project it's sprawling there's an intimacy to it that we really brought to the filmmaking in the moment when we're just sitting there kind of churning through the ideas it was like what's the best thing we could put on screen uh, and so there was a lot of confidence in the making of it just because we felt like you know we weren't we weren't tethered to other opinions we were able to really kind of hyper focus on well what are we trying to say everywhere all over the place there's connective tissue all of this all of it is linked yeah i learned so much about myself throughout the process and really it's through the character of isabel wilkerson and the real woman isabel so isabel herself i uh, was just incredibly generous with me. Um, I told her that I wanted to adapt the book, but I felt like we needed a central character to emotionally attach through to take us through the ideas in the book, and I thought that would be her. My job was to find the parallels and the touch points between her personal story and the story she was telling in the book, and to weave those together to an emotional outcome. And so it was a bit of a puzzle, but with her assistance and her guidance and her support, um, we were able to get there to something that we're really proud of. This whole project has been a learning experience uh, about me, and it's easy to find connection to those parts of the story that, uh, you know, relate to you. Um, but what I learned about myself was just the amount of empathy that I have just for the broader story. You know, meeting certain real people uh, in our journey uh, who added you know, real texture to the story, real, you know, the, the manual scavengers, like these guys who really do that for a living, just brought a humanity to it that I think helped relate it in the film, but also to me as an individual. In this film, we're not seeking agreement. I don't need anyone to agree with everything. I'm seeking engagement. Just engage with it. Think beyond what you were thinking about when you first walked in. You know, allow yourself to open up and encounter other ideas. That's the goal. and. I feel like that's been happening. I really felt it at TIFF. TIFF was the first place where we screened it for, I guess, Western audiences who were, you know, not not just cinephiles, just all. all I love TIFF because anyone, just, it's, it's a melting pot. It's all kinds of people. And the comments and the interactions that we're having with people on the street after the screenings have been um, exactly what we hope for. Thank you. So now I would like to pass the mic to What's Cleo that? King. This is a presentation. She yeah. sent me that um, yes. interview earlier, mm -hmm. and I want her to jump right in because we are becoming part of the conversation. We are in the engagement. We are actually here. Beautiful. Cleo? Yes. I was hearing somebody else. I didn't know who was not muted. Somebody wasn't muted, but now I'm unmuted. So there we go. Thank you so much. I apologize for the um, 
the difficult time starting. I just want to know that I want you to know that this movie really touched me in so many ways. And uh, like Ava DuVernay said, she said, it's not about, they're not seeking agreement. They're looking for engagement. And that's exactly what this movie did with me, which is why I saw it three different occasions. Um, I went with Kyle twice. I went with Rocky twice. Um, the first time I saw it, um, Pammy Garnes, who works with Ava DuVernay on everything, she called and said, you got to see this movie. And Paul Garnes is her husband. So she said, you got to see this movie. So I went to see it and I was so blown away. Like after it was over, there were so many things that were on my mind. Like she said, think about something else other than what you were thinking about when you first came in. And so when the movie was over, I was sitting there and I was so moved that I didn't move. I didn't move. And that doesn't happen to me. That just doesn't, it's my business. It's where I work. It's where I go to work. It's where I create. It's where I look at a movie. I see extra work. I see people going down the street that have nothing to do with the film. I see people standing on the side talking and they, they are not the camera, a camera roll kind of thing. But the things that really touched me <clears throat> was when we talk about how racism in our country, racism is this, racism is that. Ra and here we talk about caste when they said, but look, in India, everybody's the same color. So that's not racism when it's the same color. So like that sent me down a path that I hadn't taken into consideration because I know what happens in this country. I know what happens in the United States of America. So I know the racism. And the thing that I got from this movie that really, really turned me upside down was when she said, they knew we were not inferior in the first place. Why would they turn their children over to people who were inferior? Like if they really thought we were inferior, why would they then turn their most prized possession over to these people to raise, to suckle, to babysit, to teach, to do everything? Why would they do that? She said, because they knew we were not inferior in the first place. That blew my mind. That blew my mind because they had convinced me that they think I'm less than. They had convinced me of it. And when she said no, because why would they turn their most prized possessions over to us to raise, even from slavery? They turned their children. It blew my mind because in my mind, I thought they thought they were definitely um uh better than us <laughs> excuse me better than us in every way and that really made me think too so there were so many pieces of this movie and I, the last thing i'll say is that this movie doesn't fix it for you she doesn't answer your question she allows you to have your own experience while watching this movie. Something she talked about, something she asked the Niecy Nash character, something she asked answer about, some things uh, she doesn't. But a lot of the things here that were so moving were definitely engagement for me. They were definitely engaging for me. So those are the things that really made me um, think of this in a different light because I was moved on so many levels. I would like to talk about the acting because the acting was so familiar with family. I felt I felt very connected to all of the characters in the film. And I like what Ava said, that she had talked to the author, Isabel Wilkerson just about in, in pulling her character as the central character to tie these pieces together because her thesis and from an academic standpoint when you have your thesis that's your opinion and you're supporting ideas around the opinion you take and when the German woman said that well your thesis is wrong no one can tell you whether or not your thesis is wrong you have to defend your thesis until it is said that you have, have found something that is incorrect. She cannot be corrected on her thesis at that point. And 
when I left the theater, I felt that finally we have a piece of work, a piece of art that can explain the discontentment that we felt in a manner that we can stop using the word racism and say, okay, it's part of a caste system. So I was birthed into this system. So when you have purpose of life, it's it says, okay, if I was birthed in this time for a purpose, then it's to dismantle a system that causes harm to Al Bright at nine years old, that no one is with him and he's there alone. And if, if a nine-year-old boy is somewhere alone, you should not be treated by human beings in a manner that is so um, dehumanizing. And he has to live. And she was not able to interview him, but I felt that because when I was just in school, I it's they knew what you said. They knew that we were not less than. But when when we as children went into places that they were the adults, they were dehumanizing to us. And and every time I read or see the word island. My my teacher said I I was incorrect in the enunciation of island because we were studying silent letters. And in my mind, I was thinking, well, how could that be correct? Because we watch Gil Gilligan's Island every day. And the other children were saying, Island, Iceland, Island. And another student, a white girl said, Miss Brainer, Cherry said Island. And Miss Brainer, to the whole class, just lied. And she says, no, she didn't. And it took 30 years before I could even speak on that experience. And when I saw Al Bright, and even in the um, interview clip, they just show his little body sitting there next to the pool, watching kids you know, to say you're less than getting in the pool and when they put him on the float, that almost took me out. Every Just even thinking of that, don't touch the water. You are less, you are less than having fun, water fun. And, and how many times throughout our lives, so many people mm -hmm. go through this as children and there's no one else there to protect us, and and I, that's part of the conversation in the film, but there are so many moments, there's so much information, and I don't want to hold the mic. Um, right now, Rasaki, we're at a late hour. If you would like to start talking to the panel and ask them questions of what they felt or thought about the film. Okay, I could do that. Let's start off with Queen Shamala. Yes. Question, comment? I have been trying to watch Origin before the Academy's Award. It was on TV and you could watch it, but when the Academy Awards, you couldn't see it anymore. And we struggled and we struggled and we got it the other night. I was blown away with it. I would, I just love the way she chose a totally different area. And she went to India and I've been telling people that Indians are Blacks. They came from Africa. All of us come from Africa. I loved it. And I loved her um, viewpoints that she included family, because family is the background of everything. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad to be here. And you guys are doing a wonderful job. And that word behind your head, netter, what does that mean? Just indulge me for a moment. It, it, it kind of deals with... Uh... It's like it's probably rooted in nature, and then it talks about yes. God. God, like absolutely. God word. Yeah, yeah. Meta netter, yes. Meta netter, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry, you the bomb. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. The meta netter, she knows all about it. She just wanted you to explain that to the audience. Yeah, I, I keep it simple. <laughs> yes. I know. Nature and God, yeah. Yes. Ms. McIntosh, uh, more? You have to unmute. Okay, yes, uh, I apologize for that. Thank you for the opportunity. 
um, just to uh, speak on origins, I actually um, am in the process of reading the book. And um, even before the, um, the movie, the movie itself um, came out, when I think about origins and I think about this caste system, I mean, that really was an aha moment for me. Um, and just being able to look at my own life, my own experiences, my own journey, and see how that has impacted me. I just remember being in high school. I went to a predominantly white school, and I went to my advisor who happened to be an African-American woman. I'd never gotten in any trouble or anything like that, but I knew I wanted to go to college. So I went in and I sat down and I explained to her I'm a junior and I'm really excited and want to know more about going to college. So she looked up at me and she asked me my name. She went to the um, file cabinet, pulled out my, my folder, and she looked at me and said, you are not college material, slammed the folder back and put it back in the uh, cabinet. And my heart hit the floor. But what that woman did for me was to light a fire up under me to say, mm -hmm. who are you to say that I cannot do this? So when I think about this whole thing of caste system, when I think about racism, oftentimes we who are, I don't want to say that we're victims of it, but we are, um, we are the ones that are the target or the other end of it. Somehow, you guys, we also buy into that to look at a person and say that you're not you're not fit to be a part of this mm. system. You're not fit to be a part of it. The little boy looking out, sitting on the outside, looking in at these other children engaging in this fun and fair that we oftentimes will somehow buy into to things of that nature. But I'm happy to say that I did not allow that to stop me and that it has been a passion of mine not only to move forward and to engage into this society, regardless of this, this caste system, but to also bring others along too. When I see that people are also being um, mm -hmm. oppressed, disregarded, that I make it a point to to um to make them feel a part of to engage them into this into this thing that we call uh, uh an economic system. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you for those comments because I agree that we would have to buy into the system, and on many levels in America, what Cleo was talking about, we've bought into a system that, and it's the hierarchy. So it when is. you look up the caste system, there are five levels of the hierarchy and there are people at the bottom. Then there are the people that are below the bottom that they show in the film. And when you, there are methods that we can opt out. So when you're in a system, you can opt out of that system. And I believe that that's the work that we are here to do. That's what I was saying before we were born we were born into this dispensation, not a different dispensation to say we're born now. And we we want other people not to have that experience that you had or mm -hmm. that Al Bright had in the film or that I've had. Mm -hmm. um, so what are we going to do about it? I want to ask that question later, but I want um, Rasiki to go on with the panel because it I'm I'm very passionate about this film. And I and I want to be quiet today, <laughs> so I just don't go on the soapbox. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stephanie Montgomery, <laughs> is uh, Stephanie? Is that Stephanie Montgomery that has, has the iPhone? No, Stephanie I'm Williams Marquette. and Mark. Oh, Marquette's there. Marquette. Okay, Miss Marquette. Yes, I saw the movie, and now I'm listening to the audio book, and um, it was very emotional for me, because I grew up in North Carolina, in Durham, and um, my parents moved to the suburbs, and we were the only Black family in that neighborhood, 
and the white people it was a it was an Indian family there, and also a black. We were the only black family amongst the white families, and they actually put a cross in our yard. And I was only eleven years old when this happened, and so it like um, it just made me more aware of people because the way I was raised, you know, we was always around white people, you know, went to the Duke free school and all that. And um, that was really the first time I had actually come in contact with someone just hating us because we moved in, into this neighborhood. I'm like, w w what's, what's wrong here? You know what I'm saying? My parents afford the house. We moved there. You can put a cross in our yard. And so, um, I went to go stay with my grandma and see that. I said, I ain't staying out here no more. And so I went to stay with her for a couple of weeks till I got myself. <laughs> so I felt safe, you know? And it's just eye-opening. This movie, it just shows you, you know, it's not all about race because or race is the construct that we brought into the game. But it's about control, how you can control another human being and make them feel like they are inferior to you. And we have to find a way to deconstruct that. You know, we the young generation have to come about and see that, you know what, we're all brown. We all different shades of brown. Ain't nobody no pure white. Ain't nobody no pure black. We all different shades of brown. So we have to find a way to construct that system that has been brought over and put in place. Because in her book, I found out that caste actually came from the Portuguese. The Portuguese who went to India, they are the ones who put out the caste system in India. It wasn't even the Indians. It was the Portuguese. I was like, wow. But, you know, it's a really eye-opening and it's very emotional. I just love it. And we all have to, you know, just educate ourselves. It's all about educating and understand the, the structure that society wants us to be in. How people want to deem themselves superior and, you know, you have banking, banking racism, environmental racism, you have all these different type of racisms that we have to find a way to deconstruct. So that's my thought. I love I love it. I love that movie. She was dead on point. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Stephanie Williams. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Hey, hi. Um, well, I'll begin by saying that um, that I, I really love the work of uh, Isabel Wilkerson. I fell in love with her writing uh, when I read The Warmth of Other Sons, and I was in awe of the fact that she could take such an expansive topic like migration, um, like the Great Migration, and, and tell it in a way that was so intimate so that you really felt that you knew the people and you could connect it to the experiences of your own family. So when she wrote Cast, I bought the book right away, but I have to admit, it's sitting on my bookshelf. I haven't uh, had an opportunity to read it. And so I, I was excited to see the movie. I, I don't think it'll spoil the book for me since I haven't read it. The movie was phenomenal. I, of course, like everyone else who's... Uh, commented so far, I I connected to it on a number of levels, uh, beginning with the opening with the uh, Trayvon Martin story, uh, because at the time uh, of his demise, I had grandsons the same age. And so, you know, you can't help but to feel that experience. I know, you know, all of us that have parents, Black parents, felt the pain of that mother and also anger about that loss. And so that drew me into the movie right away. Uh, and, and then, um, of course, throughout I looked, I felt personal connections. Uh, I thought about my own experience with, with racism as in relation to being a part of a cast. And this was in my early days uh, as a, an employee with, uh, what ended up being um, uh, AT&T, but I was promoted to a first level manager and I had a desire to advance in the company. 
but I, I worked in an office in South Central Los Angeles. And so I had a white uh, mid manager come to me and say, I'm just gonna tell you this off the record. And that is because you're in an office that's in a black community, you will never be promoted from here because they do not promote beyond a certain level in the black community. And he said, your best bet, if you want a shot, would be to transfer, either go downtown or Orange County or something like that. So I did transfer to downtown and eventually an opportunity came up. And at the time I transferred, there was a, a white girl who transferred in about the same time that I did. And we were both competing for um, promotions. And she came to me one day and I thought, you know, we had established a really good rapport, but she came to me one day and just asked me, how are you gonna feel when you finally get that promotion, knowing that the only reason you got it was because of affirmative action, basically <laughs> inferring that I wasn't qualified uh, as she was. And so I thought about it, it really caught me off guard and, and it made me, first it hurt me, but then it made me angry. And I just said to her, I said, I don't know how have your people felt all these years when they got the promotions just because they were white. And I think it shocked her that I came back to her with that. And she just just said, well, I just wish you good luck and kind of walked away. But I, I hadn't thought about that experience in years it was something I had just talk, tucked away. But I, I this movie kind of brought that back up, brought that back up for me. And I could see, I really got from my personal experience, how she said, we have to look beyond the issues of racism and, and look at the fact that a lot of this is driven by, by caste, that we're cast because of our race, I used to say that. But anyway, um, I enjoyed the movie and thank you for this opportunity to share. Thank you. Okay, Cal. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Miss Miss Cal Odom. You might have stepped away. Okay, we go to Rocky. Hi. Let me see. Is my mic on? Yes. yes. Okay, excellent. Uh well, thank you for having me. Thanks to Cleo for the invite. Um, I've enjoyed the film every time I saw it. I think one of my most interesting takeaways was that relationship with Dr. King in India and how the Indians received um, all of that information. And because um, I, I studied a lot about Dr. King and a lot of his speeches, and I was I was unfamiliar with that part of the story. Um, and especially, you know, when when he started the Poor People's Movement and really just creating this opportunity for all cultures to start to understand that really these caste systems, these social hierarchies, I mean, it was just always a way to, for a few at the top to try to keep everyone else down. And so with the understanding that, oh, if we all connect these dots, we can, we can upset that system. And, um, so I found that very interesting, but, and of course, I believe that's really what, what led to, to his assassination in particular, you know, as long as you're just dealing with the black folk and, and trying to uh, work with these African-Americans, you're not a threat or not as much of a threat. But mm -hmm. when you start to align with Malcolm X and you start to align with, and as he started to align with the United Nations, and looking to to try to come after these countries for war crimes, essentially, um, then then of course that's when these these entities take you out. But um, so yeah, it was it was interesting to see that relationship in in those international countries. And I've had the opportunity to live abroad and and experience it firsthand because I even remember being in Brazil the first time I felt what I perceived as racism was a black doorman who didn't want to let me into a, a place because he just saw a black face. And it wasn't until I started speaking English to someone inside that he let his arm down to let me in. And I was just like, 
wait, he yeah. was a dark, uh, of a darker complexion than myself. So I'm like, dang, is this racism? But not understanding for him, it's more caste or class. And if he's thinking um, a, a Brazilian, a black Brazil, a dark skinned Brazilian, then essentially you don't belong in inside. And so uh, it was interesting oh, wow. to, to have that experience outside of that American system that I was aware of, but to feel that like, oh, okay, this is more caste or class. Um, cause I was dressed very plainly just cause, you know, it was a vacation for me, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it's, it's so interesting to get more of a, a full picture. So that's what I enjoyed about the film as well. Okay, the interrelationships. Mm -hmm. Rossi Key, I heard, uh, Rocky said he was dressed very plainly and, it sounded like that buy-in. Oh, if I had been dressed differently, maybe he would have perceived me to be at a different hierarchy. And and it's like it's not your dress. It's not it's not our skin. And we practice colorism in all different ways. And we practice putting people in and taking people out on our own. And those are the practices that I think. Um, someone mentioned earlier that we have to buy into the system and now we can tap out. Let's tap out of the systems that that hurt people, that block people, that put people in a hierarchy so you cannot do, be, and have what you want to do, be, and have. I'm sorry, continue. I, I'm very passionate about this topic and this. Just, and uh, uh, Listening to you and listening to everybody else, and it, there's like a, a programming that's being cast upon everybody. And so when do we as individuals take control of our own programming? When do you become the person that, that takes over that instead of just letting your people and other people direct you? So being self-directed and self-programming by attending panels like this and and opening mm -hmm. up your mind, that I think that helps because I can't place myself in an environment where they're doing certain things and not expecting for me to join the things that they're doing because of the natural phenomenon that humans have. So yeah, we have to take control of our own programming. Uh, that just was that's a thought that passed through my mind as I'm listening. And Marquette said something about deconstructing those ideas. And if we begin with deconstructing ourselves, then we can deconstruct the systems that we're in now. And I'm saying that this I'm so um, appreciative of you all inviting me on, especially to have these conversations with people I know. So the ideas are expanding in the deconstructed deconstruction of the negative ideas that we have been given to move forward and we can change we can change ourselves we have that power okay so let's go to brother machinda oh you know what brother machinda are you there i'm gonna go back to miss odom because she was she wasn't on for a minute miss odom you want to comment or you have a question? You have to unmute. I can come back to you. Okay, let's go to uh, historian Joe Hembrick. Hey, uh, I have not seen the movie and I tuned in late. I'm not up to snuff as what everyone is discussing. Talk my caste system and racism, basically. Yeah, I, I've got that, but I don't, uh, I really don't have a comment, but I was listening to the other sister talk about in India where they're all the same color. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't know if she's including the uh, uh, the Dravidians down in the south of the country uh, who look, you know, very, very dark. 
and uh you know uh you know most of the other indians are you know a lot lighter uh but that's all i have to comment on like i said i haven't seen the movie i don't know what they're trying to get across other than you guys and that it's not racism it's cad system uh I don't know. I just haven't. I guess I need to see the movie to be able to <laughs> talk more about what's going on. I, I... <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I got myself unmuted. Okay, Sorry go about ahead, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, you know, I've just had so many thoughts while people were talking. And, you know, all of this caste system, no matter where in the world you're looking at, what's at the root of all of it is fear. If they can invoke fear, and it's not even just with people of color or are considered at the lower part of the caste system, this hierarchy promotes fear because it makes money and it controls people. And those are the two elements that they use against all of us. And it's so many layers. You know, it, say if when our ancestors were brought over here in the boat and when they got off the boat, they did an uprising. How differently would things play out if that's what happened versus them invoking all that fear on our ancestors and so they were able to control them once they got off the boat. So, you know, it's just, it's so many layers of programming. Um, we, I think all of us have believed things that were lies, no, you know, in different parts of our life, you know, that we were because of tradition or because of culture, um, we were taught certain things that really are not true. It's just been passed down from generation to generation, or that's what we were taught, but I think if we work on ourselves as individuals, because the only people we can change is ourselves. So we need to start with ourselves and wanting to heal all the trauma that we've experienced, even not even just our generation, but ancestral trauma, that we start with ourselves. And then, then it becomes to be catapulted throughout our communities because it's called a paradigm shift. So when we start doing the work, then it just overflows because I um, truly believe when we work on ourselves, it's just not to free ourselves, but then if all of us, any one of us that has children or nieces and nephews, they see us doing the work and then we pass it on to them. And when we do the work, then we're healing seven generations behind us of stuff that we got from our ancestors, too. So that's my little two cent. Uh, Miss Odom, I want to show you something. Okay. Here it is. There it is right there. You just talked about what we do here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you you saying it in a nutshell. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Yeah, I mean, just in my energy work, I, I tell my clients, it's like, you have to work on yourself first. And, you know, we're not taught so many things to show us how powerful we are. We have power to do a lot of things, and we've only scratched the the very top surface of this big layer of crap that we have to deal with. If we saw how much power we possess, we would be doing some really great things and we would stop believing the lies that have been taught to us. Agree. Professor Ra. Oh, can I say one more thing? <laughs> it's about color. So this whole thing about black and white, I think has been imposed on us also. Because, you know, when I was a kid, it's like, if you're white, you all right. If you're black, get back. 
And I mean, that was a child thing, but I think that's what they want us to believe because we're not black and there's all these things out here in the world that they attach to black that's not good because that's still a subliminal message to us as people of color that we're not good. And white people are not white, they pink like pigs. So <laughs> I, I've i been trying to correct some things that I have said in the past. So I am not black, I am African-American because my ancestors came from Africa and I'm in America. And white people are not white, they're Caucasians. And I've been trying to catch myself so that I'm gonna reprogram myself on that. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Rock. Appreciate what's been said, if I understand correctly. I, first of all, I wanna thank Sister Cleo King for coming on and giving that narrative uh, about the movie and about the relevancy of it and how, uh, how, how it moved her and also all the panelists who have shared their experiences and how how they see uh, the movie and see life and, and shared their personal experiences. Um, I saw parts of the movie, but I, I didn't watch it all the way through because uh, I didn't have time. But, you know, racism and casteism, they, they, they exist just like ethnocentrism uh, and uh, other systems of, uh, of, of classification of human beings. Uh, it's not one or the other. When I saw the movie and she, well, you know, was her choice, she married the white guy and he died. And then all of a sudden she went on a mission. And uh, that mission was to uh, try to find out about caste systems or racism. Or, or, and, and when uh, uh, Dr. Randolph said, you know, like, like she was talking to her friend she, and saying that, you know, how white people were mistreating white people and uh, Indians were mistreating Indians and they put them in lower caste. But none could he, he, he be, uh, in, as a professor of Black studies, uh, and now it's called Africana studies, but uh, it's, 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 it's a very challenging for, I don't know how many of you have uh, studied racism, not from your personal experience. I mean, the, what your social scientists and like Dr. Francis Cresswell seen, Dr. Neely Fuller, Dr. Naeem Akbar. Um, uh, I mean, these are uh, psychologists, uh, theorists that really traveled the world. Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakanan and uh, thing, but uh, racism is a system of, and casteism, or they both are systems of management of people, the distribution of goods and services and the administration of justice and the uh, aspects of access to decision-making from either a democracy standpoint or some other type of facilitation. It's, 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 uh, you, you can't equate casteism with uh, over a hundred years of slavery, enslavement. And as far as uh, black women being mammies to white kids. They, they, they used to feed their kids pet milk. We used to do that in years, you know? I mean, uh, and, and they didn't think those pets were uh, 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 inferior, but, you know, I mean, that that's what got women to be able to go work because they used to have to nurse them. That's what the purpose of breast is, to feed children not boyfriends, it's for children, you know, to bring babies and, and, and nourishment, human milk, give more nutrients and things like that. But anyway, getting back to the movie, uh, Ava, Duvene, her mother went to uh, Dominguez High School and 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 uh, I, I don't think she went to this Compton school. And I think she's a brilliant, brilliant, uh, and, and we commend her on her success. And she goes through uh, an enormous amount of uh, race, race in a system. It, it, it's laws. Martin Luther King was fighting laws. Discrimination is different from racism. Hatred is different from racism. When I was in the struggle for Latasha uh, 
Natasha, uh, the girl that got shot by the Asian. Harlan. Uh, yeah, no, Harlan. I, uh, they interviewed me, and, I, and we was at the courthouse, and people was upset because the white judge gave the lady probation. And so they, when they interviewed me, I said, the woman that shot Latasha, that was murder. The court that let her go was racist. See, for, for caste systems or racism to exist, it, it has to exist under an apparatus of allowing it or making it legal or making it uh, a, a situation where, it's, uh, you know, you, you can't confuse discrimination or inferiorization or prejudice with racism. They're two different dynamics. I mean, there are symptoms of it. People practice that because they can get away with it. You know, and so, I mean, I, I think the movie has a lot of messages in it, subliminal messages, but you also have to tie that movie with social science and and and, and intellectuals that have traveled also, like, like the lady that wrote the book, all over Africa, all over Europe. I mean, Chancellor Williams in the destruction of black civilization, he said he started the study in Europe because they had stole all the information about black people and put it in their museums. And he studied for 30 years, went blind studying. So, you know, it's a different dynamic for, for me uh, from the standpoint of equating casteism with racism. I think casteism is a system. And if you want to uh, try to prove that all humans are humans and, and it's based on economic and social arrangements and things of that nature, that's fine. But when you chain people and make them work for 100 years, kill them, rape them, um, brutalize them, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, they use fear. Yeah, they use fear. They use torture. Torture, what the Palestinians are getting from Israel, they don't even talk about the captives and how they're treating the captives. You understand? They're just talking about, you know, they got them in prison. But what are they doing to get information from them? Waterboarding, skinning them, threatening to cut off their testicles, and things of this nature to get information from them? They don't talk about that. And America does that. But I'm just saying that, uh, you know, we lost too many people. I mean, and 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 in the caste system, it's, it's wrong. I mean, you know, to, 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 to inferiorize anybody, under a system of casteism or a system of racism. So, so you look at the dynamics of the movie, and I'm glad, it, as, as they say, it's a good conversation piece. You got people talking. That's beautiful, as Cleo said, and as Dr. Randolph said, and as the lady said, uh, you know, uh, as Ava said, you know, we just want to engage uh, everyone from the standpoint. We don't want you to agree. You got what they said. You know, and, and and then when you say, well, what did you get out of the movie? What 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 um, did you get out of the movie? Well, whatever you got out of the movie is acceptable because they just wanted you to get engaged in it. But you can't equate what we went through as an African people. Now, you make him say there ain't no such thing as racism, like John. John uh, Jay Rogers said in his book uh, 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 from uh, Superman to Man, he's and when he, when they asked uh, when the rich white man asked the the uh, uh, the, the butler, well, uh, how many how many races is in the world? And the brother said, just one, the human race. Well, okay, that's good. And you can say I ain't black, but the system says you are. They even put it in that system. When they tell you on your senses, are you African-American? Are you black? Which one you want to be? You understand? When they when you go on applications for financial aid, they, they have black on it, black on it, black on it. You know what I mean? So you, you can say whoever you want to be, but they have created a system of racism. Apartheid in Africa is based on race. By the United Nations define that. Zionism in Israel is racism, and Euro-American racism, and they all dominate, dominate for power and greed. 
And I, if you, you know, but I'm not, I'm not saying that, hey, look, you know, people are comfortable. They just want to live and enjoy life. Some people are comfortable in their oppression. Some people just trying to come up with theories to make them feel comfortable and, and perspectives. But, you know, when I, I'm a, I'm a black nationalist, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't hate nobody. You understand? But I do things to uplift my culture. I married my black woman. You understand? Not because, it, you know, I, I, I couldn't think I could get a white woman. I didn't want one because of the way I was raised as, as, and, and took a position and a philosophy that to uplift the race, to uplift our people, then when you, what you're saying, when you substitute caste for racism that Marcus Garvey was wrong. W.D. Boyce was wrong. You're saying Frederick Douglass was wrong. You're even saying Martin Luther King was wrong. Saying, even though he tried to bring races together. But the point is, is that it's a good movie if, 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 and, and I'm glad people are engaged and I'm glad that Dr. Randolph brought this panel together to discuss it because it educates me. I learned from the masses and where their heads are to make me go study and, 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 and engage with people. But it's a long protracted struggle. You know, you got um, Cornel West, who's a good friend of mine, Dr. Molina there, talking about they're going to run for president. You know, <laughs> on the black agenda, on the black agenda. You understand? You know, like, <laughs> like they're going to get Idaho in Montana to vote for them. You know, that don't even make sense. But <laughs> hey, I'm glad they're out there because at least they can raise uh, questions. But anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful struggle um, um, because it, 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 I mean, you know, y'all you, seen them, especially you, Dr. Uh, uh, Randolph at the school, uh, people fighting over race, uh, Mexicans and blacks and, and things of this nature. But that yeah, that that's just discrimination and 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 in a group conflict. But 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 when they go to court, they'll find out what racism is. When they, when they go to try to get jobs and, and, and things of this nature, and they'll find out what racism is. When they go to try to get health care, and you look at morbidity and mortality, and then you you you'll know what racism is. Well, you know, with regard to the institutions that said no blacks here, no blacks here. I go to dialysis, and the majority of the people that service us are Filipinos or Indians. Uh, and it's an easy job, just learning how to put needles in people and things of this nature, and they make big money. But you, you think young black people would get in that profession. But because they haven't been inferiorized, they don't even think like that. We have a community college right down the street, Compton College. We can't get people to go. And they can get financial aid. I mean, the enrollment is rough. You know, so I'm just saying that it, the, the trauma, as you say, we still going through it. That's my point. All right. I won't, I won't let, I'm not trying to lecture y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm just <laughs> my point of view. You know. <laughs> Hey, fact. That's hey, fact. You you're not trying, fact. you just did. <laughs> I, re I was going to say, well, I received the lecture, I was taking notes, and Isabel Wilkerson put her hat in the ring, and we, I know we've talked up to this moment, um, Rasa Key, and I wanted to ask Cleo King as our guest if she has any party words that she would like to share with us this evening, and I believe this could be a part two. Yes. <laughs> You know, I thank you so much. I am just really grateful to be here. We could definitely have a part two where I could get on on time without an issue. And I think <laughs> Audra McDonald in this movie, she talked about her name as a little girl and how the white man kept asking her her name, but he wouldn't even say her name because it demanded respect from him and he wasn't going to give it to that we can talk about because there are different things that happen even in the community 
in our communities and how we're treated. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about quickly was how, you know, when the movie came on, I have a 15 year old son and he loves to walk around with a hood on his head. And every time his hood is on his head, it triggers me. It triggers that black American mother in the United States with a hood on because one African-American mother had her son taken. And we never talk about how when Trayvon Martin was out walking, the lady on the 911 call said to George Zimmerman, please do not follow him. We got this. Please do mm -hmm. not. Yep. We do not we don't talk do about that. it. We don't talk about it. Well, it was true. It was said. It was true. It was told. Not only did he follow him, but he murdered him. And then not only did he get away with it, like he just said, people make it all right in this country. And the person who made it all right for George was his daddy. So mm -hmm. the fact that she said to him, don't follow him. We got this. Please do not follow him. When my son walks around with a hoodie on, me the fear is up and I have said to him please don't do that please don't do that well finally uh you know he continued to do it continued to do it and then I decided to let it go and then one day we were just sitting and eating and he said to me why does it trigger you so much when I wear my hoodie and I broke down crying and it was that cry from yes. a mother it was that cry of a black mother in the sea of wolves who's afraid for her child because it's that black mother that if you take mine, I'm going to take yours. So I'm not just trying to protect him. I'm trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. See, ain't no George Zimmerman come and get in mine and then he going to go, him and his daddy going to be good from now on. They good. And then I sit down and cry and my son's gone. I don't work like that. I don't work like that. So the protection is for him and the protection is for me. This country ain't treating us right. They not trying to treat us right. But mm -mm. I'm not the one sitting down and being okay with you taking mine and then everybody else not even mentioning the fact that, oh, he they said to him, don't follow him, don't follow him. But not only did he follow him, he murdered him. So. I say all that to say we could definitely use a second because the the um, the way this tr uh, country treats us, they treat us. And there's so many other people who make it OK. And that's how they have gotten away with it for so many years. And that's how they continue to get away with it. And when you talk to your closest friends and you say, oh, this person followed me in a, in a store and they asked me, you know, what, what did I think or did I need help? And I said, no. And they continue to follow me and continue to watch me. And then your dear white friends say, I don't see that as racism. I don't, I don't see that as racism. What? So it happens a lot. <laughs> And in this country, this is how it works. So a lot to be said. I'm glad I was here. Um, I know what it brought up for me. And excuse me, it brought up a lot for me. And there's so many other topics to bring up. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you for being here. And thank you again, um, Community Education Network, for allowing us to have this conversation I would like the conversation to continue and I look forward to coming back again. Thank you, yes. Professor Raw. You thank you, Rasa Key. And thank you for the panel. Thank you, Dr. Sherry. Thank you, Dr. Sherry. All right. Thank, thank you. Everybody thank, you Dr. thank you, Dr. Sherry. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. It was it was wonderful. Professor Ra, do we have yes. a guest for next week? Well, I think uh Cherie, uh, my daughter, is going to talk about mental health in an athletic mm. community. Okay. She's up. Uh, right. That should be good. And, and, and she's show, going to talk about the services and the, the and the challenges for people seeking help for their children or for their loved ones who have gone through mental illness or mental problems. Okay. Much needed show. Yeah.
All right. So next week on our show, we're going to have uh, a person, a young lady named Bree that's coming on. And the topic will be combating the influence of social media on youth. So that's next week. And everybody's welcome, just like they were here tonight. And anytime you guys want to, anybody want to come on, it's on the home page, the topic every week. So everybody have a great evening, each one teach one in Conscious Corner.